Hello everyone and welcome back to another Minecraft video and today we are continuing our spooky Halloween boss summoning arena. Uh, in the last episode we talked about how to actually summon our pumpkin boss, uh, the various things necessary for that, and of course uh, setting up our cool little arena with a couple of teleporting blocks, um, barriers around it, and all of the visual and audio effects that come with summoning uh, our pumpkin. Today, what we're going to talk about is actually delving a little bit deeper and talking about some cool phases and additions that you can add to your boss mobs that will spice them up a little bit. So once again, if this video helps you out, make sure you go down there and hit that like button. It really does help the channel out. Uh, and let's just jump right into it. So you have a cool boss mob in Minecraft or a cool idea for one. You summon it. It's got a cool colored health bar to your liking, uh, but the boss feels a little lackluster because it's just a normal Minecraft mob. If we kept the pumpkin as it was, it would just act as a stray. Sure, we could equip it with different weapons with enchantments and stuff on MC Stacker, which would be cool in its own right. But as for having cool attacks like the Ender Dragon's Fire Breath or the Wither's Charge in the very beginning, it, well, it won't have any of those, as it's just a stray. And if you don't want to get into the modding scene anytime soon, then what you're going to have to do is come up with some custom attacks. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. So. Our very first attack that we're going to give our pumpkin is when it's on full health or lower, and we're going to have it summon some silverfish. That's right. This is actually a pretty simple one to do, uh, and it works for any minion that you want it to summon, but I chose silverfish uh, for the purposes of the theme of Halloween. So if we pop into this repeating command block right here, here is the very first thing that we want to do. Once again, and for all of the future command blocks, we're executing it as the pumpkin. This is because we don't want the repeating command block to just happen over and over and over again. We want it to only trigger uh, as the pumpkin as he is alive. So if you put this right in the beginning here, it will only ever try and trigger when the pumpkin is alive. So once we start executing it as the pumpkin, we want to run the command, execute if uh, the score of the uh, pumpkin health, the one we set up in the last video, is lower than 500. Unless... Uh, the block right above this one matches red sand. So breaking that down very quickly. In the last video, we talked about uh, getting the boss health of storing the result of the pumpkin's health uh, as a scoreboard here. Um, in the pumpkin health scoreboard, it's just a dummy scoreboard. So it just sets whatever the pumpkin's health as a numerical value into our scoreboard right there. So right here, we're using it and we're checking, hey, if that scoreboard is less than 500, so less than, you know, full health, or I guess up to including 500, um, unless there is red sand on top of this. And I'll get into that in a little bit, but that's kind of our, our um, condition right there. So uh, if there's no red sand on top of this and the pumpkin has 500 or less health, which means it always will, we want to start adding a timer. Now, the best way that I've found so far to do this is to just add a scoreboard into Minecraft, a dummy one, and name it something that you'll remember, generally that has a number at the end. For example, we're adding a new scoreboard here. The scoreboard players add dummy. This is just our dummy player. Uh, and the name of this scoreboard is going to be pumpkin attack one. And we're just going to continuously add one as long as the pumpkin is at 500 health or lower, um, because this is a repeating command block and it's always active. So we have a new uh, scoreboard now called Pumpkin Attack 1, and it will continuously go up by 1. Well, that's great, but what's that actually going to do for us? Well, that creates a timer because it goes up by 1 every single tick. That's how these uh, repeating command blocks work. So now we can check when this value reaches a certain number, we can have it trigger certain things. So if you were unaware, uh, 20 ticks in Minecraft is the equivalent of 1 second. I'm not exactly sure why that is, but that's the way that Minecraft works. So if you want to convert that, uh, we can say maybe after 60 ticks is three seconds. So if we look at something like this now, our next command block, once again, we're going to execute it as the pumpkin. And this time we're going to also execute it at the pumpkin because we want uh, our silverfish to be summoned at the pumpkin. Um, now we're checking if the score of dummy pumpkin attack one, our timer that we just set, matches between 400 and 405. So this is just shortly after 20 seconds um, and a couple extra ticks. And what we're going to do after we reach the 20 second mark is summon some silverfish at our local coordinates or the pumpkin's local coordinates, so right at his feet. Um, and then once again on MC Stacker, we can design the silverfish in any way we want. Uh, in this case, I just gave them a little bit of extra health 
uh, and gave them a custom name. So now, uh, because we have it between 400 and 405, and the first command block is repeating, this means all of these numbers will trigger this summon command. So as soon as it reaches 400, it'll trigger. 401, it'll trigger again. 402, it'll trigger again. What this means is we will actually summon a total of six silverfish, because 400 to 405 is inclusive. Um, so every time that we reach these numbers, it will summon one of those silverfish at the pumpkin, meaning we will now summon six silverfish at the pumpkin's feet when the timer reaches that amount, which is pretty cool. But then, of course, we're actually going to need to reset the timer once it reaches uh, a certain value. So here we have uh, executing as the pumpkin once more if that timer that we have matches 550. So a couple more seconds have gone by at this point, I, probably another 15-ish, and we are going to reset that score back to zero. What this means is we have a 20 second interval while the pumpkin is spawning and the player starts to figure out how to do damage to it. After the 20 seconds, six silverfish will spawn. The player can kill them or avoid them or whatever. After another 15 or so seconds, uh, the timer will reset, and then another 20 seconds until the silverfish spawns, which means it's about a 30, 35 second window, give or take a little bit, between the silverfish actually spawning themselves. Um, this is so you can have varied attacks, and we can set up a whole bunch of other AI attacks in between the silverfish ones, so it doesn't just keep spawning silverfish rapidly. Um, but I will show you what this looks like. So, as you can see, we reached the 20 second mark here. Uh, and the silverfish called crop pests uh, spawn in exactly six. Uh, they'll wander around, this hole isn't usually here, um, and they will bother the player as much as they can. So that is our first phase attack. It's also worth noting, I don't think I said this in the very first video, but it can be handy to have a couple of command blocks on hand to kill some of the things that you summon. For example, I have the pumpkin here so I can just auto kill him with a command and one to also kill the crop pest silverfish that we just spawned, which I think can be very handy when you're running back and forth testing. But as you can now see, the silverfish spawn uh, after 20 seconds and will continue to after every 35 seconds. Uh, now that in and of itself is a pretty cool attack, but if you're just fighting the pumpkin with some silverfish, it's not gonna be that hard. We wanna spice things up a little bit. So another full health attack over here we have is the poison cloud. Now this is a pretty cool attack uh, that works off of the uh, particle and effect cloud system. Once again, if you head over to MC Stacker, you can design your very own particle cloud, but here's what the command looks like. We're executing it as the pumpkin. We're executing if uh, the pumpkin health, once again, is below uh, or equal to 500, unless the block of red sand is directly above it once again. Uh, we are then going to create a new scoreboard here, or I guess set a new scoreboard. You wanna create all of these beforehand. Um, and start setting a new scoreboard timer of pumpkin attack two to one. So now every tick, uh, this will also go up by one in addition to the silverfish one. But we don't want them happening at the same time, so we're gonna need to stagger them a little bit. Once again, we're going to execute this command as the pumpkin. Um, if uh, the new timer of pumpkin attack two matches between 500 and 600, so this is about 10 seconds after, uh, maybe a little less, of the very first uh, attack that we had with the silverfish. Um, and what we're going to want to do here is the first thing that happens is we teleport our boss to a specific location. This is so he's not just in the corner of the arena when he spawns this poison cloud and it doesn't affect any of the players. These coordinates are actually the center of the arena. So the very first thing that happens is throughout the duration of his attack, he will be constantly teleported to the center basically meaning so he can't move. In case that wasn't enough, we do actually have a modded effect here, which you do not need, uh, which basically says as soon as uh, the score timer reaches 500, we will also add the paralysis effect from the champions mod um, to the uh, pumpkin, which will freeze him in place. However, I have noticed this uh, effect in itself is a little bit buggy when used on strays. Um, so you could just stick with the teleport uh, constantly and he will stay in the center. After he has been teleported and frozen in the center, the next thing you're, that you're going to want to do is actually summon the area of effect cloud. So uh, at the pumpkin once more, not as this time, this one is actually at the pumpkin because we want it to spawn at its feet. We're going to summon an area of effect cloud at the pumpkin's feet, just two blocks below him. And I'll show you why in just a second. And then on MC Stacker, we have designed a, uh, an area of effect cloud that will basically grow every couple seconds and give the player poison as long as they're in it, um, which is pretty cool. 
And then finally, uh, this one I also wanted to spice up a little bit and add another tell raw. So basically, uh, at the pumpkin, uh, to all players within a 30 block distance of the pumpkin, he now says uh, shrivel and die with a couple of different colors, uh, which I thought was a nice little flavor text to add. So the reason that we're spawning it two blocks below the pumpkin is because he actually teleports to the center of the arena, which is on top of the hopper. So when he summons the area of effect cloud, it will be two blocks below or at ground level, and it will spread out from the center, poisoning all players as it gets bigger and bigger. I will now show you what that one looks like. So after the crop pests have spawned here, there you go. He teleports to the middle. As you can see, this poison cloud is slowly getting bigger and bigger. Um, and he says in the chat, shrivel and die as the cloud just slowly expands. There's a little bit of server lag right now, but you can make this as fast as you want it to. And if a player were to enter it, they would get the poison effect on the left-hand side. And as soon as that wears off, uh, he will be back to moving as normal, but because I'm in creative mode, uh, he doesn't want to run anywhere right now. You can see he just starts jumping around. So that is another neat ability that we can give to him. Now we have summoning uh, small mobs, and we also have uh, a poison cloud. These are both abilities, though, that can happen anywhere from full health all the way to almost no health, unless there's a red sand block, which again, I'll get into in a little bit. However, what if we want him to start getting stronger as the player does more damage to him? So let's come up with another ability here. This one is called Confusion Warp, and this is if he has less than or equal to 350 health. Uh, right off the bat here, once again, we're going to execute it as the Pumpkin. Uh, if his health is 350 or less, less uh, unless there's a red sand block above him, we will create another scoreboard and then start setting it, uh, the timer to go up by one, similar to the other two. Uh, this one, however, is going to do something a little bit different. So as the pumpkin and at the pumpkin, if uh, the score of the timer reaches 600, um, which is about a full 30 seconds, um, we are going to give all players within 16 blocks of the pumpkin a nausea eight, uh, or sorry, nausea five for eight seconds. Um, so that starts to make them a little bit dizzy. And what we are also going to do is we are going to spread the players around a little bit to make them kind of confused. Uh, this once again, as the pumpkin at the pumpkin, we're going to use the spread players command, which is a little unique <laughs> command in Minecraft, which just spreads all players or specific entities around uh, an X and Z coordinates, not Y. Um, you can have the range, how far between you want players or entities, uh, if you want to preserve their team and things like that. Um, and this is all players within 20 blocks of the pumpkin will be teleported around, uh, which is pretty confusing. So now they get a nausea effect, they are teleported around, and finally they will also get a blindness effect. Uh, so they will quick warp around the arena, they have a shock of momentary blindness and nausea as their screen kind of wobbles a little bit. Uh, which means that they may get confused while fighting the pumpkin. He's kind of ramping up because his health is going down a little bit. Um, and then finally, I also gave him a little bit of flavor text, which you can as well, using another tell raw command uh, to all players within a 30 block distance. He just does a little cackle there. Uh, you can throw these tell raw commands or particle effects throughout the boss fight whenever and wherever you want. It's pretty easy to set up. Uh, but that is our third ability once he gets to 350 health, so I'll show you what that looks like now. So as you can see, what happened right there is as I was waiting for him to do it, he shouts his little cackle in the chat, I warp around him, uh, I get a momentary blindness uh, and a little bit of nausea that happens on the screen uh, as he's continuously spawning crop pests because I have not taken care of them, but that is okay. So we have three main abilities now, which is actually pretty good. Uh, as he gets a little bit weaker, he has another ability that he can use. We're just going to kill all those uh, pests up there, which is great. So now, remember, as we're going through all of this, you are going to have to keep coming back into your uh, remove command chain and setting all of the new scoreboards back to zero when he dies. For example, we have all of our uh, dummy pumpkin attacks. All of those timers have to be set back to zero when he dies. Um, we've already done some of the music ones and stuff like that. That's his half health. He has a couple more attacks that I'll get into in a little bit. But uh, just keep making sure that you're going back. Any scoreboards that you create that need to be at zero when he starts, you're going to have to come back into this command chain and add them there. Uh, it's also worth noting that setting up some signs in your little command block arena uh, may help a little bit uh, so you don't get lost and confused about what certain things do. Um, but that is his three main attacks. Um, now, why don't we talk about actually giving him a half health ability? 
So once he reaches his half health phase, we want him to do something kind of different and kind of cool. So here we have a command block chain that happens when he reaches 250 health, which for us is half health. So if we go into this command block, uh, we're executing as the pump king once more. Um, if his health is 250 or less, uh, unless this time we have a different criteria here, uh, we have a dummy objective called do half pump matches one. This is basically just a Boolean or a true or false statement. Uh, so as soon as this runs through, it will set this to true so it doesn't keep happening over and over again. So unless he's already reached his half health phase, half health phase uh, we are going to start another timer. This time it will be pumpkin attack four. This one is going to be a little bit different though. Because it's his half health, uh, we want to make him invincible and we're going to give him some stronger minions that the player is going to have to kill before uh, they can actually continue damaging the pumpkin. So in order to do that, uh, we are going to need to teleport our pumpkin to a secure location. So if you execute it as the pumpkin and come up with some coordinates, if you see, I actually have this mess of barriers up here uh, with a small pocket of air on the inside uh, where the pumpkin can go and teleport. So I have those coordinates. I will teleport the pumpkin there once he gets to half health. So the players in adventure mode cannot uh, shoot him. They can't damage him in any way, shape or form. The reason I put so many barriers is because some people have exploding bows on our server, which can go through a couple blocks, so I tried to make it as chunky as I could. Um, so he will be teleported up there when he reaches half health. And then the next thing that we're going to want to do, he comes up with another tell raw text to let the players know that he's reached his half health phase. He basically says that you are no match for his minions. Uh, and then what we're doing after that is we are going to play a particle effect uh, to let the players know that something is about to happen. But we're going to give them a little bit of time so it doesn't happen right away. So if our timer of Pumpkin Attack 4 matches between anywhere between 1 and 80 ticks, so the whole time, it's going to run Particle, and we're going to display these cool Jelly Blob Particles from the Upgrade Aquatic, but any particles will do that you decide. Um, and we're going to play them at the central coordinates of the arena. Uh, and then these are all the Particle um, functionality of the command. So here we have the Delta, or how wide we want it how fast the actual uh, particle is displayed, and how many particles are spawned. Uh, so that will spawn a nice little target of particles on the ground to let players know that something is about to happen. Um, and then we want to actually summon our minions, or the Pumpkin's minions here. So once again, we'll execute it as the Pumpkin um, if his timer matches 80. So we have 1 through 80 happening on that first command block to show the particles as soon as 80 happens, or 4 seconds we're going to start summoning his um, minions at various points around the arena. These are just a couple coordinates that are around the arena. So once again, head over to MC Stacker and you can design any kind of minions you want. Uh, here I have a zombie, a skeleton, and a husk, I think, are the three that I went with, um, that all have 60 max health, uh, a bit of enchanted armor, and particle effects around them that I'll get to in just a second. Something I wanted to mention, though, is you may notice that this command block actually looks a little bit different than the ones around it. That's because this one is unconditional. So this is a repeating command block that happens every single tick, but these only happen if the ones previous to it happen. So as soon as this one happens, if that's true, this one will happen. If this one is true, this one will happen. Then if this one is true, this one will happen, so on and so forth down the chain. However, we have a little bit of a weird timer here because we are saying as long as Pumpkin Attack 4 matches between 1 and 80, that's when we want to run these particles. But this will only ever trigger if it was conditional once, because this thing only happens once. The cloning that we have happened beforehand and all the text, these only play once, which means this would only trigger once. So long story short, if you make this unconditional, because it's still in a chain, this will happen every time that it gets uh, a pulse, which means right here we have our repeating pulse. So it doesn't have to worry about these other chain ones in between. It's just going to check if this one's going, which means this one will go. 1 through 80. So we summon our different mobs around the arena. There's the zombie, there's the skeleton, and there is the uh, husk. You can see I actually gave them custom names as well. Um, they will be around the arena. And then of course, like I said before, we will set that do half pump uh, <laughs> or the half health of the pumpkin scoreboard set to 1. So this doesn't happen over and over again. It just happens the one time. It goes through, sets it to 1. Um, and then, uh, be, for a little bit of math confusion, we're actually setting the timer to 81. Uh, be, 
because otherwise if it goes and goes and goes, uh, sometimes what happens is when players try and do things out of order, they can trigger things too quickly and this doesn't actually finish computing, which means the pumpkin attack four, if it's anywhere between one and 80, will keep trying to play the particle effect and thus forth keep trying to spawn all these mobs. So just to be safe, as soon as it goes through once, we're setting the timer equal to 81, um, which is past any of these uh, computations that we have, because this only goes to 80. And this one also only, all the summons happen exactly on uh, 80. So if we set that timer to be 81, just to be safe, um, this will all play through once, and then the timer will just be on 81, continuously going upward until the pumpkin dies and it will be reset. Um, that's just for safety reasons. So this will spawn our three minions, but other than their cool names and armor, they're not going to act any differently. If you want to get more in-depth into uh, programming your minions, then you can actually give them a couple of uh, particle effects. Similarly to what we did with the uh, poison cloud with the pumpkin, you can actually give each individual uh, minion their own cloud. So over here, we have the avatar of harvest. Uh, so this is the husk, the last uh, avatar that spawns. And we are saying at the avatar of harvest, we are actually going to summon an area of effect cloud once again on MC stacker. And this one actually gives the wither effect from the apotheosis mod we have installed. But you can do anything like poison uh, or hunger or any vanilla uh, potion effects, um, which basically just means you can design the uh, area cloud on MC stacker. So when I show you in just a second, all three of our... Um, minions will have different potion effects around them so if the player gets too close they will suffer the consequences so you'll notice here as i just bring the pumpkin down to 250 health uh, manually with some commands um the particle effect plays he yells in the chat and then after the four seconds and the particle effect is complete he is teleported up there into the barrier uh, and he's safe we now see we have the Avatar of Rot, the Avatar of Decay, and the Avatar of Harvest, which have all spawned around their areas. Um, and of course, when the player gets too close to each of them, they'll have different potion effects. For example, Slowness around the Avatar of Rot, it's Wither around the Avatar of Harvest, and it is, I believe, Weakness around the Avatar of Decay. Which means you will still have to uh, kill these guys because he is invulnerable right now, uh, but they each have their own potion effect to deal with. Um, However, how do we detect if the player has killed them or not? Uh, well, first, we'll just get rid of the pumpkin over here. Um, We're going to need another command block to actually uh, check that uh, string, which is what this right here is for. It's called the rewarp chain I have. So uh, we are going to check, this is a bit of a long one, at the pumpkin, so at his coordinates, if half pump matches one, so this is if he's in his half health phase, unless there is an entity named the Avatar of Rot within 40 blocks, or an Avatar of Decay within 40 blocks, or an Avatar of Harvest within 40 blocks, then we will uh, set the pumpkin attack. Uh, we'll, we'll continue adding one to it, so the timer will continue. What this means in its simplest form is as soon as the pumpkin goes into its half health phase, it sets the half health thing to one, so we know that that's okay to trigger. But as long as there is an entity named the Avatar of Rot, Harvest, or Decay, this will never trigger. As soon as all three of them are dead, so all three of those criteria are met, then this will trigger setting the timer continuously, which if it was stuck at 81 will now be at 82. Um, and as soon as it reaches uh, 100 over here, uh, then we teleport the Pumpkin back down into the arena. Um, and we can replace that other block that we needed to clone before. So this just means all three of them are dead. Uh, we're using the same scoreboard as before, so it was frozen at 81 at the end of our chain right there. As soon as all three of the mobs are dead, it will continue the timer, so another uh, one second from 81 to 100, and then it will teleport the pumpkin back to the ground. So once again, if I show you what that looks like, we have the pumpkin up there and the three avatars are still walking around. So I can just kill them with commands or I could go and kill them in survival, but we will kill the avatar of harvest. You'll see nothing happens. The pumpkin stays up there. Uh, we can then kill the avatar of rot. And then finally we can kill the avatar of decay. 
And when all three of them die, the command block checks, it knows that there's no more of them around, and the pumpkin will be warped back to the center of the arena to continue fighting the player. Now remember, uh, the pumpkin, even though he's still at around 250 health or just below, he will never enter that half health phase again because we have the scoreboard of do half pump is set to 1. Uh, so it will uh, stay there and it will not happen unless the pumpkin is killed and, you know, all of that gets reset. But that is just about going to do it for this video as well. Uh, in this episode, we learned how to give the boss mob custom attacks and abilities based on their health. Uh, which is pretty cool, and even giving them a half health phase, which makes them more or less uh, invulnerable, and setting up different criteria that the player has to do in order for the boss to be uh, damageable once again. So in the next uh, video, we are actually going to talk about a new kind of phase for the boss mob that inducts a lot of fancy uh, Minecraft commands into it, which can turn your boss encounter into a bullet hell in Minecraft. Uh, past that, we will also talk about uh, mob drops and making the arena even more fancy, but that is all the time we have in this video. So, until next time, everyone, thank you so much for watching.